Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., from Weather Risk here in Central Virginia. You're a commander of chaos, you're colonel of confusion, you're a captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and we have a lot to talk about here, so let's get right to it. You know, uh, the next event coming up here is the one Friday into Saturday, January 22nd or maybe 22nd to 23rd, depending on which model you're looking at. And then there might be something January 25, 26, or 26, 27, so a lot to talk about. First, here's the website, and I wanted to point out to you folks that we've added this little blurb here, so for if you're having trouble getting access to the three-week newsletter, or the mid-Atlantic forecast, or the weather notification statement, or what have you, um, the, these instructions here will help you out a lot, I think. I just want to point it out to you. All right, last time on January 8th, that was my last video. And we talked about the event here for January 15th and 16th, which was yesterday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, and January 2021. Indeed, this here was the January 2nd GFS Ensemble. And we pointed out that dark blue area here, circled in red in North Carolina. This was valid for Saturday afternoon, Jan January 15th which showed a negative anomaly on the East Coast, which usually means low pressure in this kind of pattern, and a big strong ridge on the West Coast pulling down the cold air. Pretty good for the GFS ensemble, very good to forecast. This here was the GFS, the actual upper air map, uh, from January 7th, valid seven and a half days later. And again, we had the black straight line here in the Midwest, that's the Northern Energy, and there's our southern energy. And the squiggly line on the west coast, the black line here, that's the ridge. And pulling down the Arctic air into the country. And that's, of course, what these two pieces of energy merged, and that's what caused the storm. And then this image here shows the European, also from January 7th, valid for January 15th. And there, the X there showed the southern piece of energy. And then we had this other energy coming down from Wyoming, which caught the two pieces, and that's what pulled the low pressure area inland, why it didn't go off the coast, why it went from snow to rain on the coast. Now this here was the European ensemble, also from uh, January 7th, and here the European ensemble correctly showed uh, two areas of low pressure, uh, one in Ohio, one on the coast, and then it merged them off the coast on the 16th. That turned out to be wrong, but it had the right general idea. Now for January 20th and 21, Again, the models back on January 7th were showing a pretty nice trough here on the East Coast, negatively tilted with some sort of low pressure becoming a threat, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So we start out first with the Arctic Front coming in on Thursday, January 20th. And most of the models are now showing that the front, as it slows down, is going to have the rain change to snow Thursday afternoon and evening. Now this in the upper left is the European from uh, this Monday afternoon, 12 z run. And the bottom is the Canadian. And you can see there is the rain into the Carolinas, but as the cold air comes southward, you can see the high. I don't know if you can see the high right here. Let me see if I can pull up this, uh, this, uh, this arrow so you can see it. Let's see here. Nope. Not, not really. Okay, well, I can't do it. Anyway, right here in Iowa, there's a 1043 uh, millimore high. So it's a really a massive Arctic high. A lot of really cold air coming down here. So I wanted to point that out to you. And that's why it changes. And um, this here is the um, uh, also as GFS for uh, later on. And you can see on um, this takes us into Thursday night. And you can see also pretty good um, um, precipitation there. And here's the GFS. This is the 18Z run. And also, it actually has more snow than either one of those models in Virginia, the Delmarva, and southern New Jersey. You can see it again. This is actually I meant to post post the updated version, but it's you can see the snow there is pretty good. So this one even shouldn't even be there, but let's let me enlarge this here. You can see it. There you go. Interestingly enough, the GFS here, uh, this is the 18Z run, actually has accumulating snow because of that front, and it stalls on Thursday night into Friday morning, a one to three inches, um, in Hampton Roads and Richmond and. Petersburg and Danville, and then into the Delmarva in southern New Jersey. It's also an inch or so, even central Virginia up towards D.C. and Fredericksburg in southern Maryland. So 
yeah now this one on the bottom right this is the um uh is that the uh, that's the zero z british uh you get model i should say and um no this was actually the 12 z run and this is monday's today's 12 z run look at the snow it has here and that's pretty similar to the uh to the gfs and look at it those are fairly similar looking maps now the europe the, the british model here has more snow in philly than um than the gfs but no, it's an issue two difference. It's not a big difference here. So that front's going to do something. Okay, let's talk about this next event coming up. Now, <clears throat> this is from January 10th. You see the date here on the top left upper here, January 10th. This was an initial look, at day six, for Sunday, January 16th, the event from yesterday. So here was the big low, the big red ball there over the Carolina coast. And there's other piece of energy coming down from uh, Minnesota in the Dakotas into Iowa. And this piece of energy was going to swing across to, to the New England and force this system out to sea. So originally it looked like it was going to go off the North Carolina coast and not bring any precipitation north of Washington, D.C., no snow north of D.C. But then the model showed something different. Now this was the European model from January 11th, a couple, a couple of days later. And the main difference is that you see this big blue energy here. This piece of energy came plunging southward from Minnesota down to Missouri. When this energy came down this way, it caused the ridge in the Atlantic Ocean to expand into Maine, and that forced the low pressure area inland. So um, that's what this did. Now, the ensembles weren't quite that aggressive with it, but it turned out the operational models, the European and the GFS, did a great job with this. The ensembles were late in picking it up. This here is the GFS, and this was January 11th, and you can see it already has the low way inland, and there's the high with the strong southeast winds, which is what we all saw from Boston to Richmond to Raleigh, where the rain, warm air came surging in on southeast winds. So the operational models did a great job. The European detected the track inland. The GFS detected the track inland. The Canadian model detected the track coming inland. They all did a great job. Okay, this here is the Cup Air map for, for Thursday. Now the Arctic fronts come through, and this is the European model from this afternoon, this Monday afternoon, January 17th. It's valid for Thursday. See the top of the map? Look at the dates on the top. We have two pieces of energy, the northern energy in the black line in the Dakotas and Nebraska, and the southern energy in New Mexico and Texas. See that? Those two pieces of energy have to phase, and when they do, they'll cause low pressure to form and generate the snowstorm, potentially. Now, the image in the upper left is the European model, and you can see what happens is there is another piece of energy coming down from British Columbia into Idaho. So these two pieces of energy are beginning to phase here now on Friday. You can see the black lines getting closer. And eventually you get a negatively tilted shortwave over the Tennessee Valley, which causes strong low pressure and a major East Coast snowstorm. The concern here is that this next piece of energy coming down, you can see the one here we circled in Idaho, it's now in the Dakotas, might also drop southward and force the low pressure area closer to the coast. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to do that because they're too far apart this time. But it, it is the same idea as what we saw here with this energy coming down into Missouri, Iowa. You see, But this one here, um, yeah, it's too, they're too far apart. So let me bring this, uh, send the one back and you can see it. Um, yeah. And the European, the energy upstream is too far apart. So it doesn't look like it's going to do it, but it's something to watch out for. Okay. Now, this is the European model, and you can see uh, the shortwave looks very strong here. It really goes, to, really goes to town. You can see that. And that's what generates a strong surface lo low pressure and the snowstorm. Now, this is the Canadian. It also looks like the European, but the, British, the, the GFS does not. The GFS looks very flat here and does not develop anything in, the, in this. So that's a big difference. That's why the GFS doesn't have a snowstorm. The 12Z run does not. The wave goes off the coast. We'll get to that in a second. So this looks like that. And that's why they have it. This was the 0Z early Monday morning European. Boom! Snowstorm. North Carolina, Raleigh, western North Carolina. Greenville, Spartanburg, and northwest South Carolina. 
most of Virginia. It's snow in Hampton Roads that goes over to Sleet, then back to snow again, if this is to be believed. The snow goes all up into D.C. and Philly and New York and Boston and Connecticut. Okay, so uh, now you can see the heaviest snow is along I-95. The interior does not get nearly as much, according to this. That's what this model is saying. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. Now, this is the, if you look at the snow total, some early on this Monday morning. I mean, it's huge. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> okay, notice again the heaviest snows in central and western North Carolina. Hampton Roads gets hammered, if this is right, with a foot of snow. If it's right, we don't know that. Let's not get too excited yet. Well, Richmond gets hammered. D.C. gets a significant snow. Charlottesville gets a significant snow. New York City, Philly, they get several inches. But in southern New Jersey, gets hammered to the Marva. That was the early morning Monday run. Now, this is the 12Z run. And it does the same sort of thing. Notice that the, the low is a little closer to the coast now. And as a result, Hampton Roads goes over to sleet and freezing rain. So is the Delmarva. And the sleet snow, snow line on the midday European gets close to Richmond. And But you can see it rolls right up into Western Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York City, Connecticut, New England. Everybody gets slammed. Look at the snow on that. Wow. That dark blue is 15 inches, by the way, plus 15 to 18. So a huge area of 12 to 18 inches of snow in this whole area. Look at that, Raleigh, Richmond, DC, New York City, Philly, Atlantic City, Millville, Salisbury, if that's right, okay? And yes, even Hampton Roads, you can see that gets six or eight inches on this and more in the peninsula. If this is right, we don't know it's right. I'm just saying if it's right, okay. Now this was the European Ensemble. Again, this is the average of 50 different models taken as a mean. Notice it does not have that sort of monster snow. It's got a decent snowstorm, but nothing like that. So keep that in mind. Okay, this might be too much. This is more realistic. Okay. Now this here is the Canadian. The midday Canadian has the first wave of going off the coast. This is valid for a Friday night and then you know, off the coast this way. And you see moderate snow from southern New Jersey to Richmond down to Raleigh and Winston-Salem. And then it moves off the coast. It misses the big cities of D.C. and Philly, New York, Boston, Connecticut. It misses it. That's what the Canadian's doing. And it produces that sort of snowfall. Well, it makes sense. That's a big snow for Hampton Roads and decent snow for Richmond, no doubt about that, and Salisbury, and um, Raleigh, and Emporia, uh, you know, Hosky, you know, a place like that, maybe out towards Farmville. Decent snow into Roanoke and uh, Winston-Salem, Greensboro. So, you know, decent, very possible. Now, this is the 12Z, uh, this is the, excuse me, this is the, um, yeah, 18Z uh, GFS. And again, nothing. The wave is way off the coast. You see how far off it, off the coast it is? Just does not work, does not match anything else. Um, and what's happening here is that, um, the GFS is much improved. There's no doubt about it. It's done a great job the last several storms, really top-notch, matching the European stride for stride. But it still has a flaw, and that is it does not handle southern stream energy very well beyond 84 hours, 96 hours out. So here, it's 102 hours out. It's missing it. So, you know, if my theory is right, the next couple of runs, we'll begin to see the GFS show more storm development with this wave on Saturday if my theory is right. And sure enough, look what happens. The next system on January 23rd goes off the coast, on January 24th misses it. It doesn't develop anything. Um, just doesn't. But the GFS Ensemble does. Here's the snow on the GFS Ensemble. This is Friday night to Saturday morning, 1 a.m. That's moderate snow, light to moderate snow, and it's very cold, so it's going to stick right away. All of Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, southern New Jersey, and snow and sleet in North Carolina into Hampton Roads. And it continues into off and on on Saturday. You can see it's got some light snow here. So it's not a complete miss of GFS Ensemble. It's not having a huge snowstorm, but it's got accumulating snow. So there you go. Now, if we look at the GFS Ensemble, look at the ones I've highlighted in black boxes. The ones in the black boxes are mid-Atlantic or you know, southeast mid-Atlantic snowstorms. So you can see on the top row, we have two really nice snowstorms there. Uh, in the middle row here, we have three. Uh, the bottom row, again, the black box we're looking at, there's one there over on the left-hand side on the fourth row. And the fifth row, we have five of the, uh, four of the uh, um, uh, six ensembles are showing significant snowstorm, either for Virginia or eastern Virginia, North Carolina, or the mid-Atlantic. 
So that's a total of 11 out of uh, 20 out of, uh, out, of, uh, out, of uh, out of 30. So it's not, it's, it's a significant feature. Okay, so, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. It's not overwhelming yet, but there is some data to support it. This is the uh, Canadian Ensemble. Now, the Canadian Ensemble has one wave here on Saturday, and then has another low uh, on Sunday. So it actually has two waves of low pressure on the Arctic front that stalls in the southeastern states. Okay, <clears throat> now this here is the European. This is the European Ensemble. All right, let's take a look at it. So here, the ones with the stars represent a big mid-Atlantic snowstorm, and the solutions with the X represent North Carolina, Southeast Virginia, Delmarva snowstorms. And you can see there's a lot of snow in these maps. There's a lot. There are very few of these members, this is the first 25 of them, which show nothing. So there you go. So that's a pretty strong signal. It's something on the East Coast. Now, some of them are well inland, like this one here in the middle. Um, uh, that would be number seven. It's got everything as well inland in the Appalachians, but everything else is either mid-Atlantic or on the coast, and that's pretty good. And then here, uh, this slide here shows uh, the second half of the 50-member ensemble, and again, there's a lot of stuff that shows a big snowstorm in the mid-Atlantic or on the coast or some on the coast and the mid-Atlantic. So, you know, uh, you know the, the European ensemble is pretty bullish about this. i got to tell you, it really is. Now, the European Ensemble at 12Z is increased. This is the 18Z run. So, we, again, you can see here that, um, you know, from the 18Z Ensembles here, you take this, you take this, you take the mean, and you get this. Now, this is an increase from the earlier Ensemble mean, which was this. So, what is this telling us? This is telling us that the Ensemble mean numbers are going up. So, in other words, it's trending towards the bigger snowstorm solution. You see what it's doing here? It's trending towards the bigger solution. And then finally, oh, look what I just saw. This here is the brand new 0Z Tuesday GFS. And guess what? The low is much closer to the coast, and you've got a snow, moderate snow, in central and eastern North Carolina, southeast Virginia, including my friends in Hampton Roads and the Delmarva. Now, this is a step towards the European the Canadian solution. So we'll see what the trend is. That's where, they were, that's where you are right now with this. So in summary, this event does not look like it's going to be an inland runner. That's a term that the weather uh, hobbyists and weather weenies use to describe low pressure that goes inland or up by the Appalachians. It does, this is not going to happen for two reasons. First, low pressures that form on cold fronts, especially Arctic cold fronts, always track in an east-northeast direction. Second, the upstream energy coming down from the Pacific Northwest, the short wave, is too far away to pull the system inland this time. Okay. The main concern for the I-95 cities from D.C. to Boston is the low tracking too far to the south and east. I'm not saying it's going to happen. That's the concern. That's what to watch out for. Now, until the operational GFS gets on board, you expect NWS and the TV stations from Virginia to Boston to be cautious, which is fine. No problem being cautious, but I'm just letting you know. It's got the GFS has to go gangbusters on this for the TV stations and NWS and the Weather Channel to go gangbusters on this. Now, while the operational GFS is much improved, it still has issues with southern uh, jet stream energy and the short waves coming out of it. So that's one of the reasons why the GFS is kind of behind the ball here on this particular storm. But it's done a great job of the other ones. The snow ratios here are going to be much higher than 10 to 1 because of the Arctic air from North Carolina and Tennessee all the way to Maine. So keep that in mind. That means if you get a half inch of liquid, you could end up with 10 inches of snow. So, um, okay. Um, northeast North Carolina and southeast Virginia and Delmarva. Remember, you're going to get accumulating snow probably on Thursday when the Arctic front comes in, and the model data is showing one to two inches there. And that's, you know, the, 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 as well. So that you don't overlook that that's going to be a nice snowfall for you if that works out right one to two one to three inches and then also saturday even if the system comes too close to the coast and you get warm up in hampton road you will start off as snow on saturday if these if this data is right now you may not stay all snow in hampton roads uh, but you will start out as snow when you will probably see additional accumulations so that's what it looks like for those folks down there. Anyway, that's what I have to say about this. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. This is meteorologist DT from Other Risk. I'll see you over on the uh, Twitter page and over on the Facebook page.